Guys, it is already Friday. Well, happy Friday, beautiful people. Happy Friday. That's Wabu. That's Wabu. So, Bona. Today, we are continuing on in the book of Daniel. We're reading Daniel 2, 3, and 4. It is Friday, August the 7th, 2020, day 219. That's Wabu. That's Wabu, Trina. Hey, girl. Hey. So, Bona. Happy Friday, Tiffany. Happy Friday. All right, Tale, good morning, good morning, James, good morning. All right, beautiful people, Daniel chapter 2. All right, let's get going. One night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. The, then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. Rubble. But if you tell me what I dream and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, please, your majesty, tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time because, you know, I'm serious when I say if you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I would change my mind. But tell me the dream, then I will know that you can tell me what it means. Such wisdom. But I'd be like, you know what, king, I would have been like this person and his servant that said, you know, no one on earth can tell you what this means. But there is a man, uh, one of the captives of Judah. The holy gods live within him. <laughs> That's what they would say. Okay. So you have conspired to... If you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed. So you are. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind. But tell me the dream, and then I will know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied, replied to the king, No one on earth can tell the king his dream. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. I mean, that's your title, right? Ain't that what you do? Bruh. So the king, not that, and that, that's what's crazy. The king know that they can't do this stuff, yet he he, he gives, I, I don't know that he gave them the title, but he keep them around, probably for entertainment, clearly. If he knew that they couldn't tell, maybe he was testing because maybe he really didn't know, but he wanted to test them, see who I really got around me. If they can do that, if they can tell me my dream, then they real. If not, they all got to go. I mean, I, I, can you blame them? Have a bunch of liars around you. The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live here among people. The king was furious when he heard this, and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill him, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He answered, he asked Ariok, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Ariok told him all that happened. Then went at once, Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so that they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven, Yahuwah. He said, praise the name of Yahuwah forever and ever. For he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness. Though he is surrounded by light, I thank and praise you, the God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we have asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. 
Then Daniel went in to see Ariel, whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, Don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king, and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. Ariel quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives of Judah who will tell the king the meaning of his dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, Is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now, I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. He who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because Yahuwah wants you to understand what was in your heart. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze its legs were iron and its feet and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay as you watch a rock was cut from a mountain but not by human hands it struck the feet of iron and clay smashing them to bits the whole statue was the whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron clay bronze silver and gold then the wind blew them all away without a trace, like a chaff, like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was the dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you ruler over all the inhabited world and has even put wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise and take your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it will have some strength, some of the strength of iron, but while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be weak as clay. The mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not by human hands, that crushed to pieces the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true, and its meaning is certain. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel and worshipped him, and he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. The king said to Daniel, Truly, your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all his wise men. Over all his wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon, while Daniel remained in the king's court. Now, keep in mind that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, still at this time while this was going on, they were captives of Judah. They were still in captivity. Yet, Yahuwah showed them favor while in the land of their captivity and appointed them to high positions over their cap, over the captive's people, over the, the king, the captor, the captive king, I'm sorry, not the captive, the captor king, the king who captured them, King Nebuchadnezzar, 
he appointed one of the slaves, one of the Hebrews, the descendants of Judah, to be ruler and reign over his kingdom. Second in command under him. Think about that. Next chapter. Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial off officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all these officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a, her a herald shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or national language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Talk about instilling fear in the people. If you don't follow, you go into that hot blazing furnace right over there. And most people, they just like robots. They just, oh, we want to keep our life. Let's go. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issue a decree to requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They paid no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold or worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And when, and then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? They kind of sound like indoctrination to me. When you hear the sound of this music, it's like you know how you you have an experience with something and maybe music is involved. And from then on, pretty much for the rest of your life, every time you hear that song, it reminds you of that moment. Or you may find yourself doing that thing that you were trained to do when a particular song comes on jealous they make me sick just messy back in those days <laughs> Trina yeah I know right you know so they 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 for one I, they was really pissed that the king had set slaves over them like who was you king lit you know the ones the, the slaves the captives of Judah that you set over the entire province they ain't listening to you king you know like they they Trina they are they real messy they real messy but they messing this about to get them in some trouble um it should be upstairs on the nightstand no, uh, I don't know. Time to see if it fell on the floor. Okay. But, hold on. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then, what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Let me just bring out a point here. I did not know until last year that this was not the first time that this had happened. This also happened to Abraham. If you are familiar with the book of Jasher, Abraham was also thrown into a fiery furnace by, um, I think it was Nimrod. 
him and his brother, his father got pissed at him. First of all, Nimrod had heard about Abraham being born, and he told them, go kill all the children these ages. Um, but when Abraham's father, Terah, had heard what the king had decreed, he hid Abraham and took one of his maidservants' babies. I mean, that was terrible, too. How you, I mean, he, how you going to take her baby in exchange for yours? But anyway, took the baby. This is the baby I just had. And he killed killed the woman's baby right there in front of him or whatever. But what happened was Terah got pissed because when Abraham grew up and Abraham began looking for God, began looking for Yah, he, was, he went in and he pretty much tested all his father's gods you know it's just like a little quick story. I'm gonna give you a quick overview right so he was like surely you can't be god because this food is sitting before you you and i eat it or you can't do this and you know so he pretty much went in there and he destroyed all his father's gods and um his father got pissed with him and he went and told nimrod like look this boy over here cut the food not realizing that he had lied to the king many years before i'm like bro why would you go to the king knowing he coming for your head right so this whole thing takes place and then um it ended up with uh abraham and his brother being thrown in a fire but his brother was kind of on a fence at this time whether he should serve yah or serve the king nimrod and he had his his heart wasn't pure so he said well look uh if abraham survive i'll go ahead and serve abraham's god but uh, i don't know if it looked like the king winning i'm gonna serve the king so that's why abraham's brother died when they were thrown in there because he he's he was still on the fence he hadn't made up his mind he could be swayed either way so that's how he was kind of weeded out it's a really really interesting story so but i said all that to say the fiery furnace is not the first time that uh people were thrown in it because they disobeyed the order of a king so you have to go read that story in the book of jasher jasher i'll uh type in the chapter when i get done um down here in the comment section so if you've never read it you should really go check it out okay so back to the reading verse 16 of daniel chapter 3 shadrach Meshach, and abednego replied oh nebuchadnezzar we do not need to defend ourselves before you if we are thrown into the blazing furnace the god whom we serve is able to save us he will rescue us from your power your majesty but even if he doesn't we want to make it clear to you your majesty that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up nebuchadnezzar was so furious with shadrach meshach and abednego that his face became distorted with rage he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look. Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Now, let me also bring out something here. Because this teaching, if you go back to the original teaching, like in some version, it says, looks like a son of man. Or another version says, looks like the son of man. Remember the definition that we found out what son of man means? It means uh, human beings it said looks like right so the form that it held was a human just like us mom yes oh wait girl you better plug my deep freezer back in unplug unplug this unplug this and plug that in plug my deep freezer back in and so when he said the fourth looks like a god it was not talking about jc or jesus christ as some people uh like to throw in there or make an analogy to that wasn't him it was an angel pretty much it was a it was a messenger looks like a god or looks like the son of man they looked like a human being looked like you know um but it was a messenger it was an angel and another version it will tell you it was it was a messenger or if you look in the original language it there it was a um what's the word is i think it's malaki uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Malachi is referring to an angel, right? Okay. Verse 26. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell a smoke. Same thing happened with Abraham. Although his brother died because he, he was on the fence and his heart was impure about how he really wanted to live his life. But Abraham, by this time, he was completely solely trusting in Yah as his deliverer. Um, it was the same thing. He didn't get burned when he didn't even smell smoke. You, you really have to read that when I post that down here. You told me not to touch it. Why, why I didn't touch it, little tiny lady? Okay, okay, little girl. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel. What I look like Argon with a three year old, right? Let me finish what I'm saying. He, then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted him. They defied the king's command. And they were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or national language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Better turn it down. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. And let me say something about King Nebuchadnezzar, right? Turn it down, Bella. King Nebuchadnezzar, Yahuwah, although he was the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar had a heart that was pliable and Yahuwah could mold it, which is why he had, not saying that he was the best king, but he entrusted his people into his kit like, like, they, they, like they was going to like a, on a vacation. But you see how his heart was able to be turned, although he was worshiping multiple gods, it, there was a process that was happening even in King Nebuchadnezzar's heart, even with the dream and stuff. And uh, Yah had showed him, he said, you, king, are the head of gold. Yahuwah has put everything under your command and your power. Although he was a wicked king, he was a, in my eyes, he was a, and this might be like an oxymoron, like a righteous wicked king. It, you, you get what I'm saying? You know, he ain't take no crap, but... Although he was doing what was wrong, his heart was pliable to where Yahuwah could mold him and turn him and get him on the right path. You see what I'm saying? So even in his wickedness and stuff that he was doing, he ran a tight ship. And Yahuwah blessed him for that and caused everything to come under his command because he he knew how to run things, right? Just think, think about these things while you read them and why y'all would show so much favor to different wicked kings and stuff, right? I began to think about all this stuff. I'm like, but why this, this? Yeah, I'm like, okay, it, 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 it's rather interesting. All right, y'all, last chapter for the day, Daniel chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar sent his message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders the Most High, the Most High God has performed for me. This is King Nebuchadnezzar talking. How great are his... And look at this. The, the king of Babylon is paying homage to Yah. Like he's telling his entire kingdom. Look, look at this. I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders that the most high God has performed for me. How great are his signs. How powerful his wonders. His kingdom will last forever. His rule through all generations. I, Nebuchadnezzar was living in my palace and comfort and in comfort and prosperity but one night i had a dream that frightened me i saw visions that terrified me as i lay in my bed so i issued an order calling in all the wise men of babylon so they could tell me what my dream meant when all the magicians enchanters astrologers and fortune tellers came in i told them the dream but they could not tell me what it meant Mind you, this is another dream because this first one that he had, he said, tell me the dream and its interpretation. This particular dream, he told them, but they could not give the interpretation of it, right? Okay. When all the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers came in, I told them the dream, but they could not tell me what it meant. At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. 
He was named Belteshazzar after my God, and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. I said to him, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is too great for you to solve. Now tell me what my dream means. Now, I also want to point out something. I, I want to point these out simply because a lot of times people are, um, they, they get stumped or they stumble upon language and how people talk, right? So we know that King Nebuchadnezzar, that Yah talks to King Nebuchadnezzar, the king, the wicked king of Babylon, right? Yahuwah talks to him and he gives him dreams and visions to let him know what's coming in the future and let him know what's going to happen to him, right? Yahuwah deals with all people that way if, if they would care to pay attention, right? So um, King the king said he referred to Daniel as the chief of the magicians, although he was set apart and he was holy. He was Yah's set apart, holy vessel. But King uh, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't necessarily using, let's say, church terminology that church people use. To church people, that would sound like, oh, this new age, oh, ooh, I don't know, you gotta watch that, this is kind of witchy. You know, they, they, they get hung up on language and they miss what's being said and what's being conveyed. So you have to pay attention to really see what's going on. And that's what, that, that's what kills a lot of people right from jump because they can't look past the, the words that are being used to convey a message and they just get stumped on that, oh, nope, mm -mm. red flags, mm -mm. they talking about the devil, uh -uh. they dabbling in the new age, witchcraft and all that stuff. And I'm just like, would y'all just shut up and listen? God, dog. You know, so, and I ain't gonna lie, I didn't used to be as bad as some people were, but it would shut me down real quick, like, mm, they talking about new age. So, because that's what you taught, oh, this, this, these type, when you hear these type of words, magician, all this, oh, they talking about this. But especially if you didn't already know who Daniel was, right? So you'd be like, nah, bro, I ain't going to that meeting. I'm out of here. They, I don't know what they doing over there. They had seances and stuff like that. So it's like ignorance will lead you astray and you will miss stuff because you are completely completely ignorant you're ignorant and you don't pay attention and you don't listen okay so that's what i'm gonna say i'm gonna finish reading this right we all know that daniel is not a magician and that he is completely set apart and completely led by yah but yet the king king nebuchadnezzar referred to him as the chief of chief of magicians and he said the spirit of the holy gods lived in him but we know it wasn't the spirit of the holy gods it was a spirit of the only one true living god but king nebuchadnezzar he still got to work on his the way he delivers messages and his speech and the words he used y'all get what i'm saying i know y'all get what i'm saying okay so just keep that in mind and think about this in your daily life when you're dealing with different people that are in religious sex and you know it sometimes they get super spiritual and it's like you can't even talk so it's like but you just listen just pay attention it sometimes it's frustrating but you gotta learn to look on just like okay just keep moving all right i just really wanted to bring it out okay verse nine I'll read verse 8 again. At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. He was named Belteshazzar after my God. Mind you, he, he named the child of Yah after his God, false God that he worshipped. Nevertheless, it did not change who Daniel truly was, right? At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. He was named Belteshazzar after my God, and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. And I said to him, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is too great for you to solve. Now, tell me what my dream means. While I was laying in my bed, this is what I dreamed. I saw a large tree in the middle of the earth. The tree grew very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. It had fresh green leaves and it was loaded with fruit for all to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade and birds nested in its branches. All the world was fed from this tree. Then as I was laying there dreaming, I saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. The messenger shouted, cut down the tree and lop off its branches, shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Chase the wild animals from its shade and the birds from its branches, but leave the stump and the roots in the ground 
bound with a band of iron and bronze and surrounded by tender grass. Now let him be drenched with the dew of heaven and let him live like the wild animals among the plants of the field. For seven periods of time, let him have the mind of a wild animal instead of the mind of a human. For this has been decreed by the messengers. It is commanded by the holy ones so that everyone may know that the most high rules over the kingdoms of the world or some places it says that the most high rules in the kingdom in the kingdoms of men so it don't matter what's really going on yahuwah is is behind the scene directly and indirectly ruling everything right he said i create evil and i create good so whether we see an evil and good is all going together according to his plan right this is what it's saying for this has been decreed by the messengers. It is commanded by the Holy One so that everyone may know that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world. He gives them to anyone he chooses, even to the lowliest of people. Belteshazzar, that was the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now tell me what it means, for none of the wise men of my kingdom can do so. But you can tell me because the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Upon hearing this, Daniel also known as Belteshazzar, was overcome for a time, frightened by the meaning of the dream. Then the king said to him, Belteshazzar, don't be alarmed by the dream and what it means. Belteshazzar replied, I wish the events foreshadowed in this dream would happen to your enemies, my lord, and not to you. Mind you, Daniel, a servant of the Most High God, is telling the wicked king of uh, Babylon, he said, Sir, I wish that this would happen to your enemies and not to you. He was in captivity to this king but y'all had showed him favor while he was there you know in another place i believe it's in isaiah it says pray for those um when you're in a place where you're held captive pray for your captives around you that you may live a life of peace you know so that's i just kind of summed that up but it, it says that you know so wherever you go Pray for the well-being and the peace of that place, even if you're surrounded by your enemies. Because if peace comes, you also begin to live in peace, even amongst your enemies, right? Okay. Upon hearing this, Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, was overcome for a time, frightened by the meaning of the dream. Then the king said to him, Belteshazzar, don't be alarmed by the dream and what it means. Belteshazzar replied, I wish the events foreshadowed in this dream would happen to your enemies, my lord, and not to you. The tree you saw was growing very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. It had fresh green leaves and was loaded with fruit for all to eat. The wild animals lived in its shade and birds nested in its branches. That tree, your majesty, is you. For you have grown strong and great. Your greatness reaches up to heaven and your rule to the ends of the earth. Then you saw a messenger, a holy one or angel, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it. But leave the stump and the roots in the ground, bound with a band of iron and bronze and surrounded by tender grass. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals of the field for seven periods of time. This is what the dream means. Your majesty and what Yahuwah, and what Yahuwah the Most High has declared will happen to you, my Lord the King. You will be driven from human society and you will live in the fields with wild animals. It's kind of sound like he's going to lose his mind, right? You will eat grass like a cow, and you will be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way until you learn, until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. So it looked like this king had a problem with pride, right? He said, until you learn that it's not because of you, but it be, it's because that Yahuwah rules in the kingdom of men. And he sets up whom he chooses in these positions. He said, until you learn that, you're going to be living with the wild animals out there like you lost your mind, bro. You know, so and that's exactly what happened because he, he got, he going to stand. We're going to see it in a second. Um, he going to stand out there and look over his kingdom like, look at what I have created. Oh, my wisdom. And he just began to lavish the praise on himself like it was all him that helped set up this kingdom like he totally forgot y'all right okay 
seven periods of time will pass while you live this way until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. But the stump and roots of the tree were left in the ground. This means that you will receive your kingdom back again when you have learned that heaven rules. King Nebuchadnezzar, please accept my advice. Stop sinning and do what is right. Break from your wicked past and be merciful to the poor. Perhaps then you will come to prosper. And isn't that the message that we tell people? Stop sinning and just do what's right. Just live a life that's honorable. It ain't got to be super religious and stuff. Just do what's right. Be a decent human being. Treat people with fairness and kindness no matter who they are, what they look like, where they come from. Just do what's right because Yahuwah talks about this. He said, I don't care if they're a stranger and a sojourner among you. You are to treat them fair. Give them proper justice just as you would your family. Do not treat them any different because they are different from you. That's the whole message all the way through here. And somehow that gets misconstrued with teach different teachers teaching things out of their out of their own hearts and, and they have no clue and that really pisses me off but i'm, I'm gonna stop i'm almost done reading y'all okay king nebuchadnezzar please please accept my advice stop sinning and do what is right break from your wicked past and be merciful to the poor perhaps then you will continue to prosper but all these things did happen to king nebuchadnezzar 12 months later he was taking a walk on the flat roof of the royal palace in Babylon. As he looked out across the city, he said, look at this great city of Babylon. By my own mighty power, I have built this beautiful city as my royal residence to display my majestic splendor. That's what he was doing, y'all. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice called down from heaven, heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals, and you will eat grass like a cow. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. That same hour, the judgment was fulfilled. And Nebuchadnezzar was driven from human society. He ate grass like a cow, and he was drenched with the dew of heaven. He lived this way until his hair was as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Now, mind you, he, he didn't have eagles' feathers, and he didn't have birds' claws. It said his hair was long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws, meaning that they, they were just long, all right? After this time had passed, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven. My sanity returned, and I praised and worshiped Yahuwah the Most High and honored the one who lives forever. His rule is everlasting, and his kingdom is eternal. All the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. He does as he pleases among the angels of heaven and among the people of the earth. No one can stop him or say to him, what do you mean by doing these things? When my sanity returned to me, so did my honor and glory and kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out, and I was restored as head of my kingdom with even greater honor than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and glorify and honor the king of heaven. All his acts are just and true, and he is able to humble the proud. Bruh, that was so good. Hey, girl, hey, hey, Christian. Good morning, girl. Hey, girl, hey. All right, y'all, that was our reading for today. That was Daniel chapter 2, 3, and 4. I hope you enjoyed it. I won't forget to put that chap the chapter of Jasher down here in the comment section so you can read when uh, Abraham was also thrown into the fiery furnace. Like, when I read, I'm like, oh, this happened again? I'm like, oh, my. Well, it actually happened before because Abraham came before Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. But anyway, I'm going to quit running my mouth. It is Friday, August the 7th, 2020, day 219 of reading through the books of the law and the prophets better known as the old testament all right y'all so that was day two three and four and now we're about to read the blessing which is found in numbers chapter six verses 22 through 27 and Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, 
May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name. Whose name? Yahuwah's name. Nobody else's name. Yahuwah's name. The God of heaven and earth. The one who rules in the kingdoms of men. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. Who will bless us? Yah will bless us. Not anybody else. Not other gods. Whatever you may call them, it's your who are only. All right, y'all. I love you. See you bright and early in the morning. Bruce.